Our men outflanked the Yankees in a few places, but my God, they were stubborn. As never before in my estimation, they bled us. I entered the fight with 40 muskets and three officers in my company. And by our last shot had but 20 muskets and my second lieutenant commanding as I took a spent ball that had my thigh swell up like a melon. First company, hey! We licked the Rebs good for the balance of the day, but by the later afternoon, long gray lines could be seen coming from the north, west, and south. Slugged it out until our officers quit the field. I know I knocked down their rebel red colors once myself. They still came on, and the butchering went on. My own comrades were falling like grain before the scythe. Some men stated that the Germans in the 11th Corps broke as they did at Chancellorsville. But I would say that is a bold face lie. Their long lines of dead looked just as ours. When we retreated upon a cemetery, 2nd Corps Commander General Hancock and 11th Corps Commander General Howard were there restoring order, placing guns, organizing troops, and there was confidence gained from that. forced to leave the field. 
Sometimes officers having to grab the colors from the bearers themselves. The colonel surrendering the regiment. He doesn't want the Rebs to get the colors. In one case, with 16th Maine cut off, instead of having to surrender their colors, tore them to pieces, sharing with every man in the regiment. They took those pieces with them to southern prison pens. We chased Yankees through the town and captured hundreds. When the first day was drawn to a close, many officers, especially old colonels, could be heard arguing about pressing the attack, finishing it off, and of that kind. Some would caveat their commentary with, Jackson would have kept advancing. But Jackson was not here, but Yule and Hill in his place. They stopped all advances. As we bivouacked amongst the yards of towns, we could hear the sounds of federal artillery rolling into position. The accompanying sounds of axes felling trees and staff officers directing regiments into position. Every line officer realized we'd missed our opportunity. The Yankees were staying and on well-chosen ground. With this, the hundreds of scattered field hospitals filled quickly. And surgeons worked at sawing bones without rest. Regardless of all that we could do, the Rebs again drove us and held the field. 